Hi, I'm Lee Sand Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and this is November's Third Thursday with Lee Sand. I want to thank Rug Hooking Magazine. We work in conjunction with each other, and I hope that you get the uh, November-December issue of Rug Hooking Magazine. Beautiful issue, uh, lots of good information, and this wonderful polar bears on the cover hooked by Kay. Just absolutely fabulous. So make sure you get your issue. And we thank Rug Hooking Magazine. Well, it seems once I posted what I was working on on a Sunday while watching football, uh, became very popular. Uh, and it's my kitchen sink rug because I have every color, including the kitchen sink in it, and it's gonna go underneath the kitchen sink. So we decided to table what we were gonna do for the program for November and bring you the kitchen sink scrap rug. A lot of you had a lot of questions and this is the best way to answer them all and get you started on your own kitchen sink rug. So, as you know, I like to use an inspiration, and my inspiration for this rug uh, was this piece of wool, Gamekeeper. Love Gamekeeper. I had a skirt that I bought in Bermuda that was exactly the same plaid. Uh, I still have the skirt, and I just love it. Love this. It's warm. It's soft. It's got greens, it's got a little bit of teal, it's got everything in it. So this was my inspiration piece for this rug. And from there I just springboarded. And I also wanted it to be warm, not too dark, but not too light. No pastels in the kitchen. So let's get started. Here's my scrap basket. This is where I'm gonna pull from. I have every size cut from a three uh, to a salvage edge to an eight and above. And it does not matter the size of the cut. You do not have to be uniform. And this is my warm scrap basket. Um, and if something doesn't go like this white on the top, you can see it immediately. But this is my warm scrap basket where I'm pulling golds, reds, blues, greens, um, browns, all sorts, honey colors, all sorts of colors in here. No pastels, but some deep plums, some, some faded purples, etc. And I know a lot of you have your scrap basket, and Betty told me that she's got 60 plus years of scrap, so I can only imagine she must have a lot of scrap baskets. I like to keep them in a basket, keep it round, so that I can look at them all on the top like this and pull up a big hunk and put it on my frame. So that's my scrap basket, that's how we started. There, it, there can be yarn in there, there can be paisley in there. It's whatever's in your scrap basket. The squares, let's look at this. The squares are four inches by four inches. So I have a four by eight. And you can do the size of your squares in six, in eight, 10, even 12 if you so choose, if you do a wider cut. Um, so you can do it that way. It's the size that you want, but try to keep it to even numbers. Don't make it odd numbers. It doesn't create that same ripple effect. So you can do four, six, eight, 10, 12, whatever you'd like by however long. You have to make sure that your squares are straight and they're drawn straight. The first thing that you put in is your grid. And I chose to do a dark grid. Now the wools that I used for my dark grid, of course, are not just one wool. Why would we do that? We have plenty of scraps, so why would we do that? So these are all my wools that I've used in the lines, okay? And I also had a denim color in there. So I cut them in a size six. The reason I cut them in a size six is I don't want this to look like a Sharpie, like I drew it on with a Sharpie and filled it in. I want the lines there, but I don't want them to be predominant. So they were cut in a six if I didn't have them already cut in a six. This was put into a bag with a pull and hook. And you know I love to do a swatch bag of pull and hook. So that's what I did with that. And since we all know, and we've got to remember order of hooking, what we put in first recedes, just like veins in a leaf. So the grid was put in first. I would work it in a section. It also gives you a focus, and I really like that. So this is a gridded out section, okay? It's hooked in, in the squares. And then the next thing that I did 
is I did a swirl with my Sharpie. And I did that because I really don't want the straight lines. Everybody thinks the straight lines are easy, etc. No, they're not. You're easier to do a swirl just like this from point to point. And if you noticed, this is how I've created the design. And then over here, this one goes like this, this one goes like this, this one comes in here. So that's how I created the design. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, you can do light and dark, You can, and then this would be light and light, this would be dark and dark, but I chose to do a pure scrap. So what I did first, what I hooked first, and you can see it, you can see the gold in here. You can see the cranberry in here. You can see the denim in here. I hooked this line first. I have to set up my motion. My motion has to be set up. So I wanted that in one of the jewel tones or the warm tones. It could be brown, it could be orange, it could be any color. But that's where your eye is drawn, and I used one color for that. I didn't break this line up with multiple colors. It was one color and hooked. Then I just took a big heap out of this basket and put it right on my frame and I started to hook. And I would start here and I would wrap it around. Now, if I ran out here, I picked up another noodle, not exactly the same color. And I kept going and I kept going until I got to here. And I did hook these in so you can see them. These are not curved. I did little squares, as you can tell. And then I went around the square, but not always in the same color. Here's a navy, here's a light blue, here's a brown. I wanted these not to look like a log cabin. I just wanted that old feel. I wanted it to have that feel. And I really thought that that was a good way to do it. Now, sometimes, and you can see, I always used it where the two, where the four came together. And you can see that it created a diamond. A lot of you asked about how to create the diamond. This is how the diamond was created. But it was only done like that. It was only done in that little space. Then I went right back, then, you know, everything to it was curved, okay? So, that's how the diamond was created. Every time you look at this rug, you see many different, here's a diamond, here's a diamond. You can see a million different patterns to this. That's the beauty of this pattern. And by mixing the cuts, it really doesn't matter. Here's my main line. Here's another one over here. Put a gold over here. I ran out right there. Put in a brown. You don't really notice it. Came in here with a faded color. Oops, ran out, continued with the brown and gold. So as you can see, because I picked my inspiration piece, I picked a warm basket of scraps, they all go together. Sometimes you do need a little pop of color, and that's where my gold came in, or a blue, or a brighter green, uh, an orange appeared here and there. Lots of fun. Uh, I didn't worry about, there's not orange in three sections, there's not five, didn't worry about any of that. Pulled and hooked it, just the way, like that. So, as you finish hooking, and you get down to here, this will be another square, this will be another square like that, then you go to the next one. And I worked this this way, I worked it the long way for the first two rows. Then when I realized we were gonna put this into the video, I left these four so you can see them. So I will finish this row, then go to this row. A lot of people like to work this in a different way, where they'll put this line in, this line in, and all of these, okay? And then as they pull from their big plethora of colors, they'll just put it around. Then it does not have the same motion. You should really do just each square individually. Let each square stand by itself. Don't plan it. Don't try and plan it. And then you will get this overall look. And the overall look is there's many different versions to it. If I point out that this is a diamond, but then I can point out that this is a diamond, or this is mountain squiggly down here. 
every time you look at it, it's different because I did not plan the colors. I let the colors speak for themselves. And I think that's very important if you want this look. If you want a more contrived look, you can make all of these the same color. Just say your favorite color is um, herbal green. Okay, this is your favorite color. So you can make all of these herbal green. Then you can do, if this is gonna be a holiday scrap, somebody asked me about a holiday scrap. One side can be all your reds, one side can be all your darker greens, or can be gold. So you can do, so this would be green, green, red, 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 green, and you can mark it. Black, white, light, dark, bold, subtle, a million different combinations. And it's up to you what you'd like to do. It's a lot of fun to do. You don't really have to think too much about it once you have your lines drawn in, once you have your basket and your color plan. Then you're just ready to go. You can hook, and then you can put it back in the basket when you have company or the holidays approach. But when you need a quiet, a quiet evening, you can just pull it back out. It's right here. Start pulling and hooking. Now, normally I do not border a rug. However, uh, and a scrap rug is a little different. However, there is so much motion in this rug. There's so much going on in this rug that it felt it needed a border. And I needed a border that would not overpower any of the squares. So I picked um, a very, very plain brown, and it's called Outback, it's, but you can use anything. I used a very neutral texture. I would not use dyed wool in my border because it might bring out um, too much color one way or the other. So I use just a plain brown texture and it's not always the same all the way around. A texture will give you a different look. I did cut it in a six. I didn't want a heavy bulky border. I just wanted your eye to rest and say the rug is finished. And then I used elegant eggplant and I used every drop I had of elegant eggplant so I don't have anything to show you on it. But it's similar to this. That's what it's similar to. And then the middle piece is similar to this. Just an overall plaid, had a little green, had a little blue, a little burgundy. And so I used my grid line and then finished it up very subtly. You don't really, I'm only leave, I'm leaving it to this. I will bind it with wool, probably a navy wool, something that I used and uh, let that show a little bit. So this is the kitchen sink scrap rug. Um, what you, somebody asked me how I got where the palette is, nothing's jumping. Well, that's how you pick your noodles. And a lot of you put your noodles in bags. And so if you have four, six, eight, two, three, that's fine. So then you pick your inspiration piece. The logic is you pick your inspiration piece, then you pick your scraps, put them in a bag. This line is most important. And you, and you could make lines like these could all have been blue, but I didn't want that, but you can do that. And I just started to hook. Also, you do need a neutral in the pile. So here's a nice gold, and I always tried to use golds that were textures. Here's a dyed wool gold. It's a little bright, leave it in, because it does let you see the motion. But a textured gold in this case works very well. Love the herbal, my herbal green. Use that in there quite a bit. Uh, chocolate kisses, use that quite a bit. But I use Perfect Paisley Plaid, and this is just the blue section of it. And this was my neutral, this was my light. It has a lot more, it has a beige base, it has the, the orange, it has the blue. And this added, this is my light. This is my light in here. I didn't go any lighter than this. And that's important too. If you're picking your palette, you have to know what your lights are. So in my scrap, if I had a light, it had to be in this value. This is a light, but it's in this value. Very, very important. So that you have an overall look and not a jumpy, uh, a jumpy scrap rug. And again, make sure that, you know, whatever size you want, 
make sure your squares are even, make sure they're correct, and then you start with your lines, and then you just start to hook. It's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm enjoying hooking it, and when I finish it, I will also post a picture so you can see it all done. So I hope you've enjoyed the kitchen sink scrap rug. Uh, I hope you got the mechanics that you needed to make your own, and let us see your kitchen sink scrap rugs. We're happy to see them. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful holiday season, and we'll see you again in December. Bye for now.